we have um, a parallelogram and OA and OB are defined as vectors. So we don't know the side lengths at the moment and then we're asked to show that cos AOB, that's this angle here, is equal to minus 2 root 5 over 25. So what jumps to mind for me, because we can work out these sides, is to turn this into a non-right angle triangle. So this one on the left. Um, and then we're going to use the cosine rule. So if I want to work out this side length, it's going to be 2 squared plus 4 squared square rooted, which is root 20. Actually, I'm going to write root 20, but I'm then going to simplify it. So it's going to be root 20 is root 4 times root 5, so it's going to be 2 root 5. And then over here, we've got 4 squared plus 3 squared square rooted. That's the classic 4, 3, 5, or 3, 4, 5 triangle. This length is going to be 5. All right, we're not quite there, though. We also need to work out the length of AB to work out, to use the cosine rule. We need all three sides. So AB is going to be, um, it's going to be minus 2i plus 4j, because we're going in the opposite direction, then plus 4i minus 3j. You could, of course, work out BA instead. We're doing the distance at the end of the day. It's not going to matter but I've gone with AB. So I'm going to get minus 2i plus 4i. I'm going to get 2i. And I'm going to get minus 4j minus 3j minus 7j. And then AB is going to be 2 squared plus 7 squared. So 4 plus 49 root 53. Okay. I might just redraw the triangle. With just with the key things on there. So root 53, we had two root five. I might, I don't know, I decide which one I use. Am I going to use root 20 or two root five? And then this one is five. So um I'm going to use the cosine rule and I'm going to sort of temporarily, when I use the cosine rule, I always write it like this. C squared is A squared plus B squared because this is basically Pythagoras' theorem. Then you just need to remember it's minus 2AB cos B. So temporarily, I'm going to label this one big C. This is going to be little c. And then these can actually stay as they are A and B. So root 53 squared is going to be 53. That's why it's actually good to leave it as root 20, because I'm going to get 25 plus 20, and then minus 2 times 5 times b. Now, for this one, I'm going to write it as 2 root 5, because I know in my final answer I've got root 5. So I'm just you know deciding when to use which one. And then it's going to be cos a o b. Sorry, I can't quite fit that in. This here is 45, so I'm going to get 8 equals minus 20 root 5 cos AOB. So cos AOB is going to be 8 divided by minus 20 root 5. You can actually put the minus to the left. And we're nearly there. Just need to cancel it down first of all. So um, actually four goes into both. So it's going to be minus, this is looking good, minus two over five root five. And then in their answer, they've actually rationalized the denominator. So I'm going to times the top by root five and times the bottom by root five. I feel like I can just go there in one step. And we're there. Now, on to part B, we're asked to find the exact value of sine AOB. Note, apart from the very start of the question, having vectors in, this is a trig problem. As soon as we turned it into the lengths of the sides, we didn't need the vectors anymore. So the same goes for part B. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do part B. I'm actually going to go overboard with it. It's only two marks, but technically, you need to be careful. And on the old specification, there used to be questions like this where you, you definitely have to be really careful. You'd probably get away with it here if you weren't careful, but I want to I want to explain it in detail. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna spend a lot of time on this and go you know go 
into detail on two different methods for how to do this. So to get sine from cos, you can actually use the identity sine squared a plus cos squared a is identical to one, because that means sine squared a is identical to one minus cos squared a. And technically, to get sine a, you would take the square root, but you'd need to do plus or minus. That's what I mean by being careful. If you just ignore that plus or minus, in this particular case, you'd get away with it, and the mark scheme doesn't penalize you, but I'm gonna go through it in more detail. So for us, sine a o b would equal plus or minus one minus, and then we're squaring this thing here. Now you can ignore the negative, Actually, here's one I've done earlier. You can ignore the negative because when you square a negative, it just become positive. So we're going to get four over 125. To be honest, you can do the rest on your calculator as well. I'm, I'm going to do it without. 125 over 125 is 120. So this becomes 121 over 125 when I subtract them. And then when you square root 121, you get 11. Square root 125, you get 5 root 5. Which, if we rationalize the denominator, will give me 11 root 5 over 25. Okay, now at the moment I've got two answers. So I'm going to explain um, which one we're actually going to take. And it requires drawing a cos graph. So we know that cos is negative, so it's either going to be between 90 and 180 obtuse or 180 and 270 it's going to be one the angle is going to be one of those two but because we're dealing with a triangle the angle cannot be reflex it can't go beyond 180 so we're definitely in this region between 90 and 180 so if we then draw a sine graph we see that we're here and sine is going to be positive so reject the negative. Sine AOB is equal to 11 root 5 over 25. Now I'm just going to say this one more time. If you just accidentally, you know, ignored the square, the plus or minus on the square root, you would have got that answer. You would have got all two marks. This was the line of reasoning that was expected. But just thinking ahead, you know, potentially other questions, they used to be asked a lot on the old specification. You should, in theory, be careful, like I've been here. Method two. Method two is uh, make, it's a bit harder to understand, but actually it's a lot easier in the long run. So I'm going to draw a right angle triangle now, which has cos, a, cos uh, x, I'm going to call it cos x, equal to, well, I'm going to say that it's 2 root 5 over 25. I'm almost going to, I'm just going to ignore the negative. Because we know, actually, that um, like you're either going to get a minus sign or a plus sign. We know that from this left-hand side. So I've got, my, um, I've got my cos. And the adjacent is 2 root 5, which is root 20. And then the, uh, the hypotenuse is going to be 25. So now if I want sine, I need the opposite. So the opposite is going to be 25 squared minus 20 square rooted, which is going to be root 605. So now I can find sine x because it's going to be root 605 over 25. And the thing is, I know it's going to be positive, so you know, take take positive. I'm always going to get a positive when I draw an acute angled triangle, but I need to relate it back to the original problem where I had a negative and just think, is sine positive or negative? But like I did over here, it's going to be positive. And then I'm I'm nearly there. 605 divided by 25 is going to give us our 11 root 5 over 25 that we had before. Okay, so understanding that we can use an acute angle triangle is a bit harder, but the process is a bit easier. You don't have to use the identity, take the square roots and everything. You can just 
stick it in and then think carefully about whether it's positive or negative. So this is valid, just as good. Um, and yeah, it's an alternative. Finally, determine the area of OACB. We're actually, we've done all the hard work here. OACB is the whole parallelogram. So a parallelogram um, is going to have this, like the two triangles are going to have the same area because these are, these are congruent triangles. So the area is going to be two times the area of the triangle, which is a half AB sine C. So it's going to be a half times five times two root five. Those are my sides times my sine C, the angle in between, which from above is going to be that 11 root 5 over 25. All right, the 2 and the half cancel. Actually, the 5 times root 5 times root 5 is 25, which cancels with that. And so it all works out really nicely. The answer is going to be 22. Awkward question, I think. Um, you know, a tr well, essentially a trick question, but you're happy with it. Well done.